Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome to my video for the May 2024 Oh So Inspired collaboration. I host this monthly collaboration here on YouTube and get together with some of my crafty friends to show you how we can all be inspired by each other. As you hop along today, you're going to see our individual takes on this month's inspiration. Speaking of hopping along, to see what the other artists have created, you can click on the playlist link in the description box below, and I'll also have it as an end card at the end of this video. I'm sure that you'll be oh so inspired too as you hop around, and I bet each of my teammates would appreciate you stopping by, seeing what they created, and leaving them some love. This month, we're being inspired by the card you see up on screen now, which was created by Lynn Brandyberry, who is at Sending Hugs over on Instagram. I will have a link to this card down in the description box below, so make sure to go and leave Lynn some love as well. What caught my eye about this piece is that kind of blocked background and those little flowers where everything kind of comes together. In front of me here are the main supplies I'll be using for my card today. I chose the Spellbinders Sealed Blooming Stems. I thought instead of just like the single flowers there where they meet, I would do a little bouquet or cluster. For my sentiment, I'm going to be using Spellbinders Just Wanted to Say Sentiments. There are some just good all occasion ones here. And to add a little extra texture, I'll be using this vintage wood grain embossing folder from the Paper Studio. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other tools and products I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I selected some cardstock scraps for die cutting, including the purple glitter and a little gold metallic paper. I took these off camera with the dies and got them all cut out. Once everything was cut out, I brought in my art glitter glue and started adhering everything together. The liquid glue allows me a little wiggle time with each of the pieces if they need adjusting. And to make sure I got everything put together correctly, I did have the packaging there off to the left and I kind of looked at that as I was adhering the pieces. This part probably was the most tedious, but I think it took about three minutes without speeding up, so all in all, not too bad. While I work on adhering all of the layers, I would like to know, where do you get your inspiration from the most? Is it a website? Is it life? Is it magazines? Is it other crafters? Let me know in that comment section below and please include the hashtag, hashtag crafty question so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. Once everything was adhered together, I set it to the side to dry and while that was happening, I worked on the card base itself. When I first saw the inspiration piece, I knew I had an old sheet load of cards that looked very similar. And I searched, and yes, the May 2020 has a layout close to Lynn's card. So instead of reinventing the wheel and trying to figure out new dimensions, I just used the single card dimensions from the printable, and I cut my piece of purple to four by five and a quarter, and my piece of white cardstock, I cut it slightly larger than the pattern paper piece calls for. That's because I'm going to add some texture to it with an embossing folder and sometimes when you emboss pattern paper or cardstock it makes it a little smaller. So once that had this cool texture I trimmed it down with my paper cutter to the original size and then I cut it into quarters following the dimensions on the printable. If you haven't yet downloaded the May 2020 sheet load of cards and you would like to, I have the debut video linked in that description box below that will give you instructions on how to do that. As always, sheet load of cards is free for all subscribers. Once those four pieces were cut down, I brought in my ATG and added adhesive to the back of each piece and got it placed onto that light purple mat. 
I tried to get the outside borders all the same or even all the way around and that way if they're a little bit different where they meet in the middle it's going to be covered up later by the decoration. Adding embossing to this so-called plain white background is not only going to help the die cut flowers stand out but it also gives all that white a little extra texture. I brought in a top fold white card base from my stash and added the matted piece to the front center of it. I decided to go with the I'm glad we are friends sentiment from the stamp set and I'm going to be stamping it in VersaFine Onyx Black onto a scrap of white cardstock. I got this set up in my mini Misty just in case I have to restamp an area and because it is a new stamp it still has those manufacturing oils on it so I wiped those off with my fingers and then got it inked up and stamped and once again I'm glad I had the Misty because I did have to redo just a little bit. Off camera I cut down the sentiment and I made a little gold bow. My flowers had had enough time to dry now, so it's time to build the bouquet. Once again, I brought in the packaging, and you could definitely figure out the layering and the spacing you wanted for this, but since it's my first time using it, I did try to follow what it showed on the package. I would kind of put two pieces in place, and then where they overlapped, I added a dot of the liquid glue and pressed it down. Now this isn't going to be glued solidly together, but later you'll see when I place the sentiment, that's also going to help hold everything in place, especially those skinny stems that my glue bottle would be a little bit too big for, even though it is the fine tip. Once I had all of the bouquet parts together, I kind of figured out where I wanted my bow to go, and to hold that in place, I used a glue dot. This is clear, so the knot of the bow pretty much covers it up. Once the bow was in place, I brought back in my card base and figured out where I wanted this to go. Then, once again using liquid glue, I got my bouquet added to the card front. I tried to put dots on the back of all of the bigger leaves and I set this underneath the clear block and let it dry completely. While that was drying, I added a small strip of foam tape to the back of my sentiment and now I'm going to get that added to the card base. I placed the tails of my bow where I wanted them to lay and now the adhesive holds down the stems and the bow. To finish off the card, I wanted to add a little sparkle, so I brought in some light purple gems and I added five scattered across the card front. And here's a close-up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit the rest of the team videos by clicking on the link in the description box or the end card here in just a minute. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.